On tonight's edition of Newswatch 18, the government shutdown has finally ended. And Iowa soldiers receive a warm welcome back to the Midwest. The Cyclones are preparing to get their first Big 12 win this Saturday after their loss against Texas Tech. I'll have more on that later. We had another beautiful fall day today, but cooler temperatures are on the way. I'll tell you just how chilly we're going to get. You're watching Newswatch 18. This is Newswatch 18. Watch 18 starts now. Good evening and welcome to Newswatch 18. I'm Maria Lizagnoli. And I'm Molly Gear. Thanks for joining us. After weeks of political standstill, the government shutdown has finally come to an end. On Wednesday night, the Senate and the House agreed on a bipartisan deal that put the government back to work and raised the debt ceiling. This bill will fund the government until January 15th and raise the debt ceiling until February 7th. President Barack Obama quickly signed the bill late this morning, making the deal a permanent agreement. The bill will pay for load employees what they are due as soon as possible. In reference to the Affordable Care Act, Democrats viewed the issue as minor, while Republicans say they will continue to fight against it. It seems for now the Capitol has reached some peace, although tomorrow is quite a different story. Exercise is a kinesiology program that is part of the nationwide initiative to promote healthy lifestyles. Trek Desk is one initiative used in the program. The Trek Desk is a treadmill that has space for its users to do work while walking. This was designed for people who are often desk bound, much like college students. Trek desks are located all over campus, including the Memorial Union Bowling Alley. The machines are open for all students to use. Are you looking to sharpen your comedic skills? Gavin Jerome, a professional entertainer, has paired with ISU economic professor Peter Orasm to create and teach a one-of-a-kind stand-up comedy course known as Comedy College. Jerome says that they try to add serious and practical things into each one of their lessons to show that comedy can really relate to the workplace. For their final exam, students will perform their stand-up routine at the M Shop in the Memorial Union December 3rd and 4th. Deer in Iowa are avoiding more than cars and hunters this year. Iowa is in the midst of one of the worst outbreaks of the fatal deer disease known as EHD. This viral infection is carried by small insects known as midges that have flourished in our summer climate. Last year, the disease killed almost 3,000 deer in more than 60 Iowa counties. And this year, the toll is mounting fast with 500 deaths already. This affects Iowa hunters as infected deer meat loses quality and safety standards. The elderly are taking back the streets, or at least they are virtually. Older generations are now using a new video game exercise program created by ISU researchers. The program called Living Well Through Intergenerational Fitness and Exercise is aimed at reaching an older audience in rural areas and targeting those who are isolated or don't have access to a gym. High school and college trainers lead an eight-week exergaming program that combines strength building with video games like tennis or bowling. They also reach, teach the older adults how to to use the gaming system so that they continue to use them after the eight weeks initially. Iowa hospitality is attracting more than just students. An entire family moved to Ames after encountering the charm and politeness of Iowa. Greg Margo and Eric Hodges Tinner packed up their belongings, including five horses and one cow, after Eric enrolled at Iowa State. Eric is getting into his first year with the College of Veterinary Medicine. The family is already planting roots in the state by recently renovating a seven-room farmhouse, an old one-room schoolhouse, and a barn that was originally built in 1906. The family plans to open up the barn and riding arena to 4-H and FFA members soon. This helps ensure future students that Iowans care about the community. After 40 years, Watergate is still a key learning experience for American policy. The Watergate scandal will be the topic of discussion at 8 p.m. tonight in the Great Hall of the Memorial Union. Former U.S. Representatives Elizabeth Holtzman of New York and Edward Mesvinsky of Iowa will give their wisdom on the case. The discussion will give insight into the constitutional responsibilities of Congress when there is high crime and misdemeanors happening while in the office. 
President Nixon will be the key player targeted in this lecture after his actions spiked permanent doubt from the U.S. public. And now we'll be joined by Nate on the desk. Nate, how is the game against Baylor looking for this Saturday? Well, the Cyclones are keeping their heads high in preparation. I'll have more on that after the break. Stay tuned. You're watching Newswatch 18. Welcome back to Newswatch 18. I'm Nate Busco with your Cyclone Sports. ISU football is staying strong as they key up for the next chance at victory. Coach Paul Rhodes and the Iowa State football team will look to bounce back from another close loss this week as they square off with the Baylor Bears in Waco, Texas. The Bears, who are ranked 12th in the nation and are also the Big 12's lone undefeated team, rank first in the nation in points scored. Baylor also finds themselves in the top five in passing and rushing. That is tough news for the Cyclones, who were outgained by 355 yards last week at Texas Tech. The Cyclones should never be counted out, but with questions about the health of quarterback Sam Richardson and the offensive line, it will be interesting to see how Rhodes gets his team fired up for another potential big-time upset. The Cyclone women's volleyball team dominated West Virginia in straight sets at Hilton Coliseum this past Saturday to snag their 10th win of the year. The key to victory for Iowa State was jumping out to early leads in each set, which proved to be crucial when the Mountaineers rallied late in each set. Cyclone soph sophomore Tori Knute, the top server in the Big 12, keyed a 7-0 run in the second set with two aces. Senior Kristen Hahn finished the match with an impressive 19 digs despite accumulating just two in the first set. The team will now hit the road to Austin this weekend for a showdown with fourth-ranked rival Texas. Men's basketball coach Fred Hoiberg has led a rapid return to prominence for the Iowa State program, and fans have really taken notice. For the third time in Hoiberg's four years as coach, season ticket sales have topped 10,000. In fact, the Iowa State ticket office reports that season tickets for the 2013 season are now over 11,000 and rising. Fans looking for single-game tickets should act as quickly as possible, because as of 8 a.m. on Wednesday, those tickets became available to the public, which means they may already be gone. With two returning starters and some exciting newcomers, this year's season in Cyclone Hoops is not something you will want to miss. Fan Appreciation Night has arrived for the Cyclone women's soccer team, and will take, as they will take on the Baylor Bears tomorrow night at 7 p.m. at the Cyclone Sports Complex. Last time out for the Cyclones, senior midfielder Emily Goldstein scored three goals against Oklahoma to become the first Cyclone soccer player to record a hat trick since 2011. The team will look to ride Goldstein's hot streak in their matchup with Baylor, who have just one Big 12 win this season. At the game, fans who have attended at least four home games will be entered into a raffle for a chance to win a brand new flat screen TV. Good soccer and a possible souvenir? Talk about a win-win. And that's all I've got for sports. Colleen, what can you tell us about the weather this week? Well, while we may have a pleasant day today, cool temperatures are on the way by the end of this week. I'll tell you just how chilly we're going to get in the full forecast coming up. And welcome back to Newswatch 18. I'm Colleen Milbert with a look at your weather forecast. Currently here in Ames, we're at 54 degrees under mostly clear skies. You can definitely see that full moon if you step outside this evening. Winds are calm out of the west-northwest, about 10 to 12 miles per hour. Across the state right now, temperatures are still staying consistent, mainly in the 50s. Over to the west, however, in Sioux City and Council Bluffs, temperatures <clears throat> are in the mid to upper 40s. That's due to a slight cold weather disturbance in that area be making its way towards us later this evening. Tem our winds are out of the northwest, west-northwest at 9 to 10 miles per hour. A little breezier towards the west as that colder disturbance makes its way towards us. They'll be hitting us later into the early morning hours. Clouds and radar, you can see all those clouds covering most of the state. Maybe a few patches of that clearing. And as you can see, that uh, disturbance off to the northwest making its way towards us. No precipitation is expected for us here tonight, but we may have a bit more clouds moving in overnight as well and into the morning hours. Taking a look at future cast, you can see where those clouds have built in. Those continue throughout the night tonight with some clearing tomorrow morning around 7 a.m. So as you're heading out to class, you might see that sunshine back out in the forecast. And as we move in throughout the weekend, or tomorrow evening, I should say, that another cold front starts to make its way through, bringing another chance of some light showers overnight on Friday, but nothing heavy is expected as this makes its way through. And early morning Saturday, it makes its way towards the central portion of the state. Like I said, only maybe some light drizzle or a few isolated showers. And overnight tonight, a little chilly around the state. Temperatures will be in the low to mid 30s, 39 in Des Moines, 35 in Council Bluffs, and even up to 35 in Fort Dodge. So definitely grab a jacket as we'll be getting close to the freezing mark. So some frost may happen as well this evening. We'll be warming up to the low 50s tomorrow. 55 in Des Moines, 53 here in Ames. 
It's definitely some cooler fall air is back in for this week. And it will continue as we move in through the rest of the week. So here tonight in Ames, we'll see a low of 36 degrees. Partly cloudy skies becoming a little chilly as we head into the early morning hours. Those winds will be out of the northwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour, creating a little bit of a wind chill, so temperatures may feel like they're below freezing tonight. Tomorrow will be 53 degrees with mostly clear skies. Cooler temperatures today as we reached about 63 here today. It's be right around average here tomorrow. Winds will be out of the west-northwest a bit calmer than today at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Take a look at our uh, week forecast. Like I said, Friday, beautiful and sunny. And Saturday here in Ames would be about 53 degrees with a low of 32. But Saturday is also a football game forecast. While it may not be here in Ames, it will be in Waco, Texas, where the Cyclones will play uh, the Baylor Bears. At Waco, temperatures will be around 66 degrees at kickoff time, which is 6.30 p.m. Under fair conditions, so definitely a good uh, day or evening for a football game. And the rest of the week looks to be nice and pleasant too, with uh, mainly clear skies, temperatures in the 50s. And by Monday and Tuesday, you can see those temperatures dipping a bit back down to the lower 50s, those temperatures back around the freezing mark. So that's all I have for weather this evening. Back to the desk. Thank you, Colleen. Mm -hmm. Iowa soldiers from Honduras are finally making the trek back to the Midwest today. 40 soldiers with the Iowa Army National Guard Unit returned to Des Moines today after a deployment in Honduras. The, the troops were mobilized last December and spent their time in Latin America providing base defense, visitor protection, and worked as an emergency response team. There will be a homecoming ceremony tonight at 8.30 p.m. at the Des Moines International Airport, and family members will once again be re reunited. And that is all that we have for tonight's edition of Newswatch 18. Make sure to join us next week for more Cyclone news, weather, and sports. Have a great weekend, Ames.